Good morning, my name is Michael Tuppy. I'm a Scottish Blue Badge tourist guide and I'm taking you on a virtual tour of Edinburgh uh, during the one hour allotted time uh, for exercise. So today I'm in Edinburgh's new town, which isn't far away from where I stay, and I am on Hanover Street and just behind me is Henderson's. Uh, which is the most longest running continuous uh, vegetarian restaurant which was founded here in the 1960s. It was founded by Janet Henderson uh, when she was travelling through Europe uh, visiting her aunt on occasions who was a vegetarian. Was a bit different at the time but today it's a much sought after outlet and it does uh, supply during this lockdown period online uh, supplies of uh, vegetarian based food so Hanover Street is really named after the Royal House of Hanover which is a German family when there was a bit of a power vacuum in the 18th century when the last uh, Protestant monarch uh, who was Queen Anne uh, kind of died and then uh, they were looking for somebody to succeed and then of course the Hanoverians were the closest in succession so uh, the new town of Edinburgh does bear the names of uh, the royal house and various members of the royal family and we're just heading up now on this beautiful Hanover Street in the spring uh, early summer sunshine it's most beautiful to walk out today and admire the amazing architecture now Got some sort of modern outlets on this side, but if I swing around a bit, see on the other side some of the older buildings and the understated, what we call Georgian style of architecture, which was uh, very popular in the 18th and 19th century. Now I'm just going to take a little glimpse up here of the Royal Society of Edinburgh, which is that uh, green domed building you can see there and it's built in Portland stone which is very unusual uh, for Scotland where it's in particular Edinburgh which is the local Craigleith uh, honey coloured sandstone this is more a white grey type of building stone which is very similar to the stone in London the Royal Society we'll take another look at that here the Royal Society was a kind of uh, society that was formed with the great blossoming of uh, learning and thinking and scientific invention uh, discovery in the 18th century and it was a bringing together of uh, thinkers and uh, innovators and it was also a coming together of uh, like antiquaries and people who also respected the ancient traditions of Edinburgh to kind of bring them together and literary people also uh, it had various sites, this wasn't the original site, it was over in the old town of course because it was founded in the 18th century and this building today is a 19th century building which used to be a life assurance building and it's very palatial and uh, very stunning and noticeable so I'm just going to cross over Hanover Street here quite carefully because we have to uh, pay attention to our social distancing just now We've got this little bandana with the Scottish salt tie on it, of course. Uh, if I need to be closer to people than I would usually want to be, then uh, we've all been advised by our First Minister uh, to wear that at the moment. So I'm crossing over at George Street, which I was talking about in an earlier uh, virtual tour, named after King George III. And it's a kind of uh, top-end shopping street. Uh, with many independent shops, uh, tailors, shirt makers, you name it. And what distinguishes it sometimes is this uh, statue of uh, George IV, who famously visited Edinburgh in um, 1822. And he was encouraged to do that by a writer, famous writer called Sir Walter Scott. Now, I take a bit of a glimpse over to the other side. We're just passing the Royal Society of Edinburgh here on the left hand side, former insurance building. And if we look over to the other side of the street, on the corner, that's a grey uh, building with the vertical blocks, has got all sorts of uh, uh, metallic figures because it used to be a travel agent going back to the 1960s. And uh, it's very refreshing to know that these uh, iconic figures, which are hark back to another time of another use, 
are protected because this is a World Heritage Site and it's quite good to know that more recent uh, items of uh, architecture and history are protected but not all, just going back to like the 18th century and such right so we'll cross the street again, Hanover Street and you can get a glimpse of the Royal Scottish Academy on Princess Street just at the bottom of the street here we'll go over here and I'm going to turn you around and you have a wee look at the Starbucks sign and get that in Starbucks, but if you see the metallic figures, international figures, and there's a Native American in there also because it was actually a place where you would book your holidays, uh, which of course we do a bit more online today, but we still have got physical travel agents around too. I'm just going to keep walking down Hanover Street, which is a bit quieter because there's not so much uh, traffic around. Just passed a car with the radio on if you wondered what that sound was. <laughs> Now, Hanover Street is, uh, was the home to one of our kind of unsung heroes of the 19th century. He was called Alexander Bain, and uh, he was a clockmaker, electric clockmaker in fact. He was very interested in electronics and so on, and he was a mechanic. And he lived here, and we'll pass the actual door of the house where he stayed in, Alexander Bain. And uh, he's lauded for... Uh, kind of developing the telegraph system until he was uh, superseded by Morse, of course, and today we know of the Morse code and so on. So there is another Scot who was iconic and in there in the early days, but uh, he's noted really as the inventor of the fax machine, Alexander Bain. So we'll just uh, cross over and have a look at where he said. You can see as we cross back over Hanover Street, nice view of that statue of George the Third, Fourth, sorry, George the Fourth. <laughs> All the Georges sometimes, uh, difficult to keep track of them. So here is number 21, Hanover Street, which was the home of Alexander Bain, who invented the fax machine, surrounded by history here. On the other side of the street, Merchant's Hall. It's a very amazing uh, building here and uh, we had the Royal Company of Merchants uh, which uh, goes way back to the 13th century given the Royal Charter because uh, trading uh, and making of goods was essential to the development of Edinburgh's power in the 13th century given a Royal Charter to protect them to protect the merchants and all those involved in the manufacture and trading of goods. So there is Merchant's Hall. I'm gonna take us uh, over the street a bit to have a closer look at that. It's in the neoclassical style of architecture and the merchants uh, had uh, charitable and education involvement and they uh, were part of the running of what were called hospital schools uh, which we know now as uh, private schools in Edinburgh, such as George Watson's and what was uh, Mary Erskine's and Daniel Stewart's. Uh, but uh, they had uh, charitable ideas to distribute their wealth to help uh, the poorer people. But today, these are fee-paying schools, very much changed. So I'll have a wee look at the pediment. Pediment in architecture is that triangular bit above and you can see are uh, two unicorns yeah and it's quite an impressive uh, sculpture and in the center is a sailing ship and crossed l sticks crossed l sticks were a system of measurement here uh, like yards or meters where people would measure out cloth and uh, just to make sure if you went in and asked for so much and paid for so much that you would uh, get that quantity very much regulated. And we're just going to uh, go further down here on Hanover Street and looking at this uh, building here uh, this was uh, built as the Royal Institution uh, and this was uh, built for the Board of Fisheries 
and trade uh, in the early part of the 19th century uh, because uh, it was to establish uh, protection uh, for um, a growing economy in Scotland because after the unifying with England we didn't want to be in a competitive mode so uh, that trustees of the Board of Fisheries was quite important as well as industrial um, growth and they were um, part of that as well but then the building today uh, embraces uh, a lot of what we call neoclassical uh, architectural elements we really borrowed from Greece in particular but Roman too and it wasn't everybody that was a great fan of uh, the type of um, architecture that was uh, uh, here in the new town of Edinburgh in fact uh, John Ruskin a famous art critic he said, uh, your decorations are as monotonous as your simplicities. Uh, how many Doric and uh, Corinthian columns do you think there are in your banks and corporations and post office ones exactly like another? Um, but uh, very much a matter of opinion because many people love this building and I love uh, Greek architecture in particular, so can turn an appreciative eye to this. Uh, have a closer look. Now, later on in its history, um, it uh, moved on to be what we call today the Royal Scottish Academy, which is uh, to do with fine art and architecture. It's a bit like a big club who have annual exhibitions of selected works uh, to have a showcase of paintings and so on. Uh, so it had changed of use from its original intention and it, it sits here at the bottom of what we call the Mound uh, on uh, Princess Street. And the Mound is the road which connects uh, the new town to the old town. Okay, there's a rather, rather fine building on the top, which wasn't really meant to be the case as a statue of Queen Victoria. And the building was uh, built, designed by one of our leading architects called William Playfair. Okay, so that is Hanover Street and I'm going to leave you with a little view along Princess Street here. Uh, just a little glimpse into the distance there. And wish you well and all the best and thanks for watching. And uh, perhaps I'll maybe see you here in Scotland one of these days in this beautiful Edinburgh and the wonderful spring sunlight. Okay, bye for now. Thank you. Bye.